So Sarah will take us through our plan and some um, expectations that we might be holding in the space today. Awesome, thank you, Molly. All right, so for today in this next hour together, um, we're gonna do a little warm up right after this that Molly is going to lead us through. And then we'll dive into what will be the main bulk of today's content, um, where you'll get a little taste of the way uh, Graybox uses and thinks about trauma-informed creative practice. And we'll be, we'll be using our bodies to activate the color wheel. Um, and in that moment, we'll give you options depending on your level of desired participation. So don't worry about that. Um, and then we'll end up with a reflection that I will lead and then in the larger Q&A. Um, so anything that you would like to ask Molly, any Molly and I, any questions or comments that you have about the workshop, and then we'll close it all off with upcoming events with Greatbox and then a quick little checkout so that we know how all of you are doing. And I'll hand it back over to Molly to get us started. Wonderful, thanks Sarah. Um, so I'm gonna do a bit, I'm gonna monologue for a moment um, and kind of brain dump some of the sciencey stuff that uh, we're talking about tonight. And so we talked about with the artist nervous system, thinking about like stress, trauma, and burnout. Um, and those all being very much closely related. Um, when we're talking about stress, it's anything that is overwhelming us. Uh, and then if it becomes a traumatic experience, that's really starting to kind of throw our nervous system out of whack uh, and we're not quite able to come back into a place of balance. And then burnout can be kind of this combination of the two. Um, so, so know that when we're talking about these things um, that we're really starting to, to widen out our definition, okay? Anything that overwhelms our ability to cope is basically what we're talking about tonight. Um, so the two components of the autonomic nervous system that I'd, I'd like to focus on this evening is the sympathetic and the parasympathetic. So you have this color wheel in front of you and the sympathetic hangs out anywhere you see the word mobilization, okay? Uh, it's, it's got those warmer colors. There's a lot of heat that comes up with mobilizing. Uh, in our like daily language, we might hear like fight and flight and that's going to be that more mobilized energy. And then there's parasympathetic. So that hangs out on the cooler side of the color wheel. Uh, and that is often known as rest and digest. Okay, so we've got a little bit of sympathetic energy, that mobilizing energy, those warm colors. And then we have the parasympathetic energy um, that is the cooler colors, that is calming us back down. Uh, and every time we take an inhale, we get a little sympathetic energy. Every time we take an exhale, we get a little parasympathetic energy, all right? Those activate our nervous systems. And when you work out, you might notice like you're breathing specifically in through the mouth and that's because your sympathetic nervous system needs a little more air in order to get you through that workout, okay? So we see it on a regular basis. Uh, our bodies are hardwired for this. And then along comes stress and burnout and trauma in the year 2020, and it throws us all a little out of whack. So organizing it into this color wheel, and let's get a little more specific. I'm gonna start with the green energy. Uh, and what I really enjoy about this color wheel is the difference in intensity, right? Maybe it's, it's a lighter intensity more towards the center. Maybe it's a little darker on the outside, a little more intense. Um, and then we've got our colors here. So green energy. This is a socially engaged energy. So it's this balance of immobilization and mobilization or a balance of our sympathetic and parasympathetic nervous system, right? So like with every breath, we get a little bit of each of those activated. That's what's happening here. We're able to ride that wave. Uh, we're interested in connecting with others through a screen or in any other way. Um, so there's a balance happening there. Now it can start to kick up. There's this like welcome mobility that's happening, this welcome mobilization, this playful energy. This is where we start to get creative. Uh, so know that the sympathetic nervous system has to be activated in order for us to be more mobile. So this evening when we start doing some movement, your sympathetic nervous system is gonna come hang out for a little bit and know that it's activating and know that that is a safe response as well. 
Um, so we've got that enjoyable mobilization happening in the yellow and orange. And then there's that point where it's not so enjoyable, that overwhelming energy, um, where it's just pure mobilization. Um, and so that can feel like anxiety. It can, it can happen when we have too much caffeine. Like it's that I can feel my heartbeat. I can feel like a lot of energy and not really sure what to do with it. Uh, so that's our overwhelming energy in the red zone. Coming down into purple, we've got our frozen energy. So we often hear fight, flight, freeze. Yeah. And freeze often gets the reputation for being the absence of energy, but there's actually a lot of energy behind freeze. And with a freeze response or that frozen energy, there is this kind of fight, this conflicting situation with our nervous system, um, the autonomic nervous system, to mobilize versus immobilize. All right, so it's like hitting the gas and the brake simultaneously. There's a lot going on there. And then if that dips out, we have no energy and we are immobilized and that's more that blue energy. All right, we hear it in our language. I'm feeling blue, yeah? Um, then as we come up to this lighter kind of blue green, that's a welcomed immobilization. So a welcome stillness, a calm meditative energy. This is where intimacy can be built. Um, so that, that's another form of immobilization um, that is kind of counter to the playful energy that welcomed immobilization, all right? And then we come back to our green zone. So we're curious, and Sarah's going to set us up with a poll. Where do you think you fall on the color wheel this evening? All right. And knowing that there's no bad, good, indifferent, et cetera, that goes with, that goes with the color wheel. Uh, it's very much like where you're at. Um, and knowing that that is what your body's doing right now as a way to cope with any stresses that might be going on. Um, Sarah, how much longer do you think we'll have this on? I can put a little music on. Well, we have eight out of 10 voting. Have, oh, well. So okay. just a couple more people and. Okay. Yeah, so not too long. Okay. We'll put some light music on in the background. Yeah. It's and also interesting to just observe what's in the Zoom room. Awesome. Okay, so it looks like a lot of people are hanging out in the in the red and the purple, um, and some in the green. And that's, I think that's super normal. <laughs> that's super normal right now. I'm definitely somewhere in that that um, low overwhelm zone. Zoom overwhelms me a little bit. So I am with <laughs> I'm gonna close this poll. All right, thank you all so much for sharing. Um, so as we move forward, that's something to think about, right? Part of trauma from creative practice is that we're gonna continue being um, compassionate for ourselves as much as possible. Um, and compassionate for the other people in our room. And we have moments where we check in with ourselves and just be curious about what's in the room, why we're feeling what we're feeling, um, and acknowledging that whatever we feel is okay. So one thing that we do at Graybox a lot, um, just to create a sense of community, but also just for us to, to know, right, how we're all doing, um, is we do a check-in. Uh, and lately the question, how are you, has, is just a difficult question to ask. So we have edited a little bit and we're, what we're asking you tonight is whether you have any care to share or need to know. So anything that you would like to share with us as a group or anything that you think we would like to know. And you can do this in one of two ways. You may either type it in the chat box um, that Molly talked you through earlier, or you may create a gesture without sound, and then you can turn on your video and perform the gesture. So a gesture can be something as small as my hand closing, and that's my gesture, or it can be as big as me flailing about, and all of those are absolutely acceptable for whatever your body needs right now, right? Like I'm in a space where I can mostly move horizontal and not so much back and front. So a lot of my movement is going to be this way, and that's all right. Or if you're like, I just, I just don't really feel like moving, my body's kind of still right now, maybe you just move your head and that's your gesture. Or you can just type into the chat box and that is A-OK. -okay. So take a few, take a couple of minutes and feel free to share any care to share or need to knows either through video or through the chat box. 
feeling grateful to be in a space with other artists tonight. So am I. Want some music back on? Yeah. Yeah, all right, I gotta share. I'm gonna share the screen too. Do you care to share or need to know? Excited to learn from friends. <laughs> Thanks for being here, DNA. <laughs> I see you, Veronica. Thank you. Why the home? Because it's their own time. Oh, the home has been the focus. I missed that top one. I'm sorry. Definitely to be happy in the online space with fellow gray box folk. Excited to learn and virtually be somewhere else. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> definitely. Quarantine fatigue. Yes, absolutely. Mm -hmm. All right. And with the music continuing, and if you would like to keep responding, you can go ahead, but I'm going to hand it off to Molly as she takes us through a grounding exercise. Glad to be here. Glad to have you. All right, everyone. Um, yeah, I like Christine's idea of being virtually somewhere else as well. I think that's, that's something that has definitely been coming up for me lately and been really helpful. Um, so we always take time at the top of our rehearsals uh, in order to take care of our nervous systems or at least allow some space to take care of our nervous systems before getting into a creative space. And so tonight I thought kind of what Paco is bringing up around the, the quarantine fatigue or Zoom fatigue like Sarah is talking about, palming might be a really lovely activity tonight. Um, so here I'll I'm going to stop the music and stop the share so that you can see me a bit more. So with palming, it's um, a lovely way to give our eyes a rest. And so I can demo first. There's not like a whole lot to it, um, but taking the palms over your eyes and maybe the elbows are resting on your lap or on a desk or some surface, right? And so with that, you have your eyes uh, open behind your hands and you're trying to block out all of the light, okay? And once you have all the light blocked out, then closing your eyes again. And so our eyes are attached to our vagus nerve, which is bringing in a lot of information for ourselves um, and is that mind-body connection nerve. And so if our eyes are starting all over the place or taking in a lot of information, then that might kick in some hypervigilance, might kick in some of that sympathetic response. And so giving our eyes some time to rest, complete darkness. If you want a little bit more, since we're talking about the color wheel and painting, you can imagine that with your eyes, you are painting the back of your eyelids black and even darker and darker. So you're really letting the stimulus sink away. And then when you are ready to let go of the palming, begin by letting the eyes open and let them flutter behind your hands. And then slowly start to open the hands and take the hands away from your face. And maybe take a look around your space. You're like just waking up a little bit perhaps. And then know that there'll be some opportunity to look away from the screen again. Um, and if you have any responses or any questions, you're welcome to pop those into 
the chat. Refreshing. Good. I'm glad, pa Paco. Um, Sarah will take us next into our warm up, continuing to paint. Thank you, Molly. All right. So, going off Molly's idea of painting with your eyes, if you want, you can feel free to close your eyes again. But we're just going to start with our hands for the idea of a paint. And we're just gonna start flicking. So imagine your fingers having some paint on them and you're just slowly flicking. You're flicking them all over the room into your space, just slowly flicking that little bits of paint to color up, color your space. And let that flow into your wrists. So now your fingers and your wrists are flicking. Maybe it flicks up a little bit or flicks down. Then moves into your forearms. And remember to adjust for your body needs. And into your elbows. Now we have noodle arms. The elbows are flicking. And then your shoulders start to flick. Be gentle with them. this one because it's a joint. You don't wanna Injure your shoulder while you flick. You're flicking paint all over your room. And that slowly goes into the ribs. And if you feel like you need to get up from your chair, you can, you do not have to. And then it goes into your belly and your belly. How does your belly and your back flick? coloring the whole space. And then it moves into your hips. And that energy slowly moves down into your thighs. Maybe this is a little bit more of a shake, right? How <laughs> do we shake the paint off our thighs onto the floor? into our knees. Again, be gentle of your surroundings. You don't want to knee yourself. And your calves and your shins. Down to your ankles. Body's getting warmed up. the tops of our feet. This is a little bit more fun. It's like, it's like playing in a puddle. And then to the tippy toes, looking paint all over your room. All right, and this next one, be gentle. We're gonna bring it to the neck and the head. Be gentle with this one, because you don't want to get whiplash. Take about 30 more seconds, looking around the space. And then continuing to move, but slowly bring your focus to the screen. And flick the paint through the camera. Flick it into the void. We're going to paint the void. <laughs> and some of us have our cameras on. So if you want, go ahead and see if you can borrow movement from someone else in the camera. Maybe you're bored of the way you're moving your arm. Or copy someone else. <laughs> I'm going to color our space. Color the void. And pause. And whether you're sitting or standing, just feel the heat in your body. Feel your breath. And relax. 
gonna hand it back to Molly. Thank you. All right, we're gonna keep the movement going. So Sarah had us going with these like, you were dipping your fingers in pain and splattering the room with it, flicking it around, flinging yourself all over the place. Um, we're gonna keep going with that. But now thinking about each of the colors on the color wheel that we, we talked about before, and how would you fling that color, okay? So depending on if you are feeling like whole body movement, uh, which apparently I am, I got up very quickly um, <laughs> during the warm up. Um, you can think about like you have these giant, those six colors around you and you can like jump into each of those and play with flicking the paint that way. You can also imagine you've got your six paints lined up in front of you. You can dip maybe just the hand. How would you flick versus red versus purple versus blue? All right. So I'll walk us through this improv and whatever visual works for you of dipping yourself into paint and then painting your room, um, which so many of us have been around in the same spaces for a long time now. So you can imagine that you're like completely redecorating the place. Okay. Uh, so as we go through this, I encourage you to really follow verbal cues. Um, and I do have the screen up with the uh, improv score if that's helpful for you to see uh, where we are, okay? So we're going to start with that green paint, uh, whatever that is in front of you. So that is that balance of movement and stillness. And so imagining that you're either stepping into that paint or you are dipping yourself into that paint somehow. How does you, how do you send that paint around the room, that green energy? What kind of green energy are you sending around your room? How does that balance of movement and stillness work for you in that green zone energy? So maybe that's some moving around, maybe there are little pauses that are enjoyable and then you can keep going. All right. And then from that green energy, we go into the yellow orange energy. So that is going to be our playful energy. You can imagine dipping yourself in however you wish and into your yellow orange energy, playful energy, lots of silly movement. All right. This is, this is a place for the sillies to come out. So this is a very mobilized state, lots of movement might notice some changes in heart rate, muscle tension might change, breath might change. And from lots of silly movement, keep that lots of movement and now it's gonna be serious movement. So how does that change, all right? We're going into that red zone energy, lots of serious movement happening. How does it change? How does your movement change? when you decide to paint your room with red. Red zone energy, serious movement, lots of it. Then moving to that simultaneous stillness and movement. So you still got all that red zone, but blue starting to come into our purple zone. All right, simultaneous stillness and movement. How do you dip yourself in purple and paint your room? Notice what changes for you. Notice how you move. Notice the breath. And from our purple, we go into blue. So that uncomfortable stillness. What does uncomfortable stillness going into the blue zone, going into the blue paint? How do you paint your room blue, paint your space blue? with blue zone. Notice the breath. And then finally, that welcome stillness. So 
that blue green kind of teal energy meditative calm energy you dip yourself in that blue green paint and paint your space how does your movement change All right, we're gonna go for about one more minute. We're gonna bounce around a little bit more with the color paint, which I know like in color theory, that's gonna turn all the paint brown, but pretend that that's not gonna happen, okay? Let's go into that purple energy. So we've got simultil simultaneous stillness and movement happening. Purple energy to paint your room. And then let's go into the blue energy, blue paint. That is the uncomfortable stillness. How do you paint your room blue in uncomfortable stillness? Switch it up, go to that red energy. Lots of very serious movement. Red energy, painting your space red. And then let's make it silly, all right? yellow orange energy lots of silly movement so very mobilized yellow orange flicking it to all the walls all over your space and into that green energy of balance of movement and stillness you dip yourself in green and paint your room paint your space And finally, you've got that green blue energy. Welcome stillness. How do you paint your space with that welcome stillness energy? I'm starting to come back to your screen if you've wandered away. what we'd like to do here feel free to take a moment to pop into the chat if you care to share anything um, from our color wheel dancing so with all of that in mind those six colors that we explored we're going to um, or you have the option to pop into a breakout room uh, and create a composition with a small group. So if you are looking for that social engagement, uh, you're welcome to create a composition. So a short little dance sequence with some buddies in a breakout room. Uh, if you're feeling more like this is a solo journey that you are on this evening, you're welcome to stay with us in the main room. And uh, we'll take about five minutes or so in breakout rooms. Yeah um where you can can choose to create with someone else and we'll go back to this um so these are kind of the the materials so we talk about crumbs nuggets and muffins that's a different workshop um but essentially we're making little crumbs just like itty bitty little moments of creativity okay cool Alrighty, thank you all so much for participating, whether it's in a duet, whether it was solo. Um, what we're gonna do right now is, again, a part of the gray box process, right? We, we, check in back, we check back in with ourselves. So I'm gonna open the poll again, since it's something that we're, we were familiar with. Um, and go ahead, check in with yourself again, and see where you are, where you were living in this color wheel that's in a, that's in a vertical line on our computers. <laughs> Right, we're having some more blue green. Awesome. Yes, a lot of energy has moved away from the, the red and purple and into the yellow, yellowish green zone. That's really good to hear. Awesome, thank you so much. All right. So one of the things that um, we like to think about, and I like, would like to invite you to think about, is 
just what the experience was like and what caused this state shift for you um, in this past hour. So go ahead, you can throw that into the chat box. Um, what were the little things that you feel helped shift you in the, in the color wheel? Or if it didn't shift you, that's still a thing to check, right? Well, what are the little things that um, make you feel different right now? So go ahead and throw that into the chat box if you would like. Moving and being, being silly helped. Space to be a little goofy. Paint flicking shifted the mood. Laughing with others, yes, that playfulness. Moving the body, yep. Yeah. Feeling blue and then exploring more into the red and yellow movements. Ooh, it's going in so fast. I need to make my chat box bigger. Um, guided meditation, mm -hmm. that does help. Uh, to feel a way to feel closer to people. Yeah, it's hard right now, so I'm glad we were able to do that for you. Um, feeling green after seeing everyone be active and playful in your office. <laughs> Going internal uh -huh. during the still sections, moving, standing, seeing everyone cheerful. Definitely, it's a very it was a very communal activity as much as we. We're able to through Zoom. So thank you. That's thanks to all of you and for all of you for participating. All right. And I know a lot of us here, um, especially with Tempe Creatives, we are artists in our own way. Um, and I invite you to think about if you put that hat back, hat back on, right? Whatever artist hat you um, are choosing to wear right now or would like to wear right now, what do you think you might bring back into your own work or, or into your own lifestyle right now, right? It doesn't have to be work specific. This can be brought right into your own lifestyle and your daily routine, if you like. So for this, I would invite you to either put it in the chat box or you can go ahead and unmute yourself if you would like. So what are you gonna bring back with you? Movement to daily life at work. Yeah, especially since we're at the computer so much. <laughs> Painting the studio anytime we want. <laughs> Spontaneity. Better understanding of all the different kinds of feelings making art can bring up. Yep. Yeah. Art can make us feel things or can help us release. It's a lot. And we all know that. All right. You can go ahead and continue to answer the two questions if you would like, but I also would like to open up this space um, for all of you to ask Molly or I any questions that you may have about this hour or the work that we do or any comments that you have for us. So it's an open Q&A right now for all of you. Um, there's a couple of questions, Molly, in the chat. Well, how do you address trauma? I mean, as, as an educator, for example, I'm going to, I'm actually preparing myself to start doing some uh, Zoom uh, classes with patients with Alzheimer's. So, I mean, the, you know, I'm, I'm doing a course of that, but at the same time, I mean, you kind of talk about stress, tra trauma, and burnout. And so if you have somebody that is showing any signs of stress or trauma, or you're working with a group of artists that they're open to work with that, so there is any specific technique or any suggestion. I love your kinesthetic style. I really, uh, I think I've been looking for that a lot and uh, because I'm, I teach contemporary art practices and performance and it has, you have to have a kinesthetic connection with people. So I don't know if anybody has any comment or any experience through that, I would appreciate to hear about it. You want me to take that one? Yeah. 
sure. Okay. I, I um, have thoughts, but is... I feel like you have oh, go more for of it. the science experience. Go for your thoughts. Okay. I feel like, well, one is like knowing your, knowing your audience and you, you do know your audience is a group with Alzheimer's. And I think that brings up its own, um, own things to think about. Right. And that, how does, how do they, like I worked with young people and the thing that I had to think about was how do young people interpret like zoom? How do they interpret the screen? What is it like for them? And something happens when we are performing or attending something in a space that is our own. So what is the setting in which your um, students or patients are in? Because that's going to impact also the way in which they receive the material that's coming from you. Um, how do you talk about, are you thinking about more about talking about trauma? Because if it's like activating it or trying to work through it, um, like one of the things that Molly and I did tonight was we we um, facilitate activities where you did not have to be looking at the screen, right? You just needed to be, you just needed to have the audio. So that still allows you to participate without having to add on to the, the Zoom or screen fatigue that you may have had earlier in the day. Um, Molly, do you have anything else to add? Yeah, um, I'm thinking about like, what I work primarily with college students and these first three weeks of the semester have been entirely online. And um, for me, it's how am I holding the space? What am I bringing to the space? And what's the story that I'm telling myself? Um, especially as Wi-Fi issues come up and confusion on where the link is, like all these little things that can start to really get under my skin just because like it's a lot um, and, and having, you know, 24 little rectangles that, that all are trying to work through this. Um, so I, I'm really taking time um, to, to check in with myself to make sure that I'm in an okay space um, before going into a space with others. Uh, where stress, trauma, burnout may be existing. Um, and I know we're getting close to time. Um, so let's see. Does Veronica, I hope that helps and, and answers. Okay, thanks. Good. Good, I'm glad. Um, and Nadine, have fun in your law class at seven. Um, Maybe just one of the last things um, that Christine had, had brought up, favorite resources um, or books on movement and artwork and creativity. In general, I tend to follow kind of movements as opposed to individuals. Um, and so there's a lot of uh, international summits around trauma. Um, there's an embodiment um, that that are free and completely open. Um, and there's really a wealth of knowledge being shared right now. Um, and so I, I tend to, to gear myself towards either embodiment or somatics as a general way to, to find kind of those resources that I'm most interested in um, and, and going from there. And Sarah can, can add a few other things with that as well in the chat. Yeah, I'm adding it in the chat, Molly, so that um, so that we don't feel rushed at the end. I just need to look up the cool. title. I do more work in the theater area with youth. A lot of my dance has been more um, of me as a performer. So a lot of my research is in the, uh, the theater for youth area. Um, and there is a book I know where it's specifically theater games um, to work through trauma or difficult situations or, or topics that we feel are like too difficult, right, um, for young people to understand. Like if we talk about, maybe we talk about death or we talk about um, like losing a friend, what does that mean? Um, and there are little drama activities in there. Um, if Molly wants to do this, so now what, I can go ahead and quickly grab my iPad and try and find that title for you and type into the chat box before we end. Cool, yeah. So um, this is kind of a busy week for us. This is one of three workshops that we're doing or panels and events. So if you want to continue the conversation tomorrow, um, we have a, we're calling it a live podcast recording because we are launching a podcast in November um, where we'll be talking a lot about creativity and trauma. 
Um, and so you can follow us on Facebook, on Instagram, check out our website as a way to find out more about the um, trauma-informed creative practices in the classroom it is very specific for tomorrow night's event and it is free. Uh, registration is required. And then starting on Thursday, Sarah, myself, and we'll be joined by a colleague, Chris Weiss, and we will be doing a three-part workshop on applications of trauma-informed creative practices with kind of this through line of interoception. Sarah will focus on working with youth. Chris will work on culturally responsive art artistic practices, and I will focus mostly on being a trauma-informed organization. So that is available on a sliding scale. If you have any questions, you can always reach out to me. And also we have a survey for tonight's workshop. Um, we ask that you complete the survey. And if you do, and if you opt in to receive a care package, you will get, this is the first time revealing it publicly. We have a coloring book coming out uh, at the end of the month that Sarah and I worked on. Uh, and so this has taken our creative process, taken our our performances and put it into a coloring book and if you fill out the survey you get this along with a stress ball for um for filling out the survey all right and sarah added some some things into the chat as well for some resources and and that's it we are at time we're a little over um, so thank you all very much for being here for hanging out on your monday evening Hopefully we see you at some other event. And um, please remember that Tempe Creative and has more of these events and workshops happening uh, over the next few months, okay? So thank you and take care of yourselves all.